Hello and welcome to Novato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Portilla, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with uh, the new auto layout feature in Figma. Now, auto layout has been implemented in Figma in December 2019, and um, now almost a year later, it has been redesigned and reworked to offer more flexibility. And in my opinion, this new version is uh, much better than the one before. So uh, let me show you how this works and what you can do with it. Now, for those of you who don't know what auto layout is, let me give you a very quick explanation. Basically, auto layout allows you to create dynamic frames that respond or adjust to their content. To give you an example, uh, here is a simple frame and I'm going to add some random shapes to it. Now I can select this frame and I can add an auto layout and you can see that its size will change to match its content, right? And I can use the default horizontal direction or I can change it to vertical direction. And you'll also notice that if I'm going to delete one of these elements, that frame will resize accordingly. This is essentially what auto layout is all about. And with this, you can create buttons that uh, change their size depending on the text you have inside them. You can create uh, menus, uh, entire layouts that will um, resize and adapt accordingly. It's really my favorite feature of, uh, of Figma. Now, in this new version, there are some very exciting new features. I'm going to show you all of them, and I'm going to start with individual padding. So let me actually remove auto layout from, uh, from this frame, and let me create a uh, button. So I'm going to create a piece of text, and with this selected, I can press Shift-A or right-click Add Auto Layout. And this will place that piece of text in its own frame. By default, it's going to give it a horizontal direction, but you can always change this to vertical. And it's going to give it 10 pixels of spacing between items. We'll get to this in a little bit. And 10, pa 10 pixel padding around the items. And I can easily go in and change this to 20 pixels. And to be able to see this better, let me add a fill to this. Okay, and you'll see that now this piece of text is positioned 20 pixels all around from all the edges. And I can easily change that value right here. Now in the old version of auto layout, you could specify the horizontal padding and the vertical padding. So top, bottom, left, right. But in this new version, by clicking this icon where it says alignment and padding, you can actually change each padding value individually. So for example, I could say, okay, I want 16 pixels on the top, 32 left and right, and maybe 24 on the bottom. Or I can do 10 here. You can now add individual padding to any element, which is a fantastic feature. Now, when you do that, the main padding value here is uh, transformed into mixed, but you can always click it and change it to whatever value you want. And that value will be applied to all four sides. So individual padding on elements, very, very cool new feature. Now we also have some, uh, some exciting new options for resizing. To demonstrate the resizing options, I'm going to add an auto layout to this frame. And let's set um, the spacing to let's say 32 and padding also to 32. And I'm also going to create some elements inside to demonstrate these uh, resizing options. We'll start with a simple button. I'm going to do shift A to add auto layout to it as well. Let's add a fill color. And here we can see the very first resizing option, which is hug contents. Hug contents basically allows the parent to resize 
to match the width and height of its children. So in this case, the parent, which is frame 2, is resized to match the size of the text plus whatever padding I have set here. If I remove the padding, you can see that the uh, the parent is now uh, now has the exact uh, width and height of its children. If I'm going to duplicate this button, the parent matches that. So let's put back that uh, that padding. And now if we remove this, you can see how uh, hug contents works. Even uh, the name hug contents is uh, is very descriptive. Now, the second resizing option has to do with fixed width or height and fill container. So for that, I'm going to create another uh, frame with auto layout. And for this, let's actually give it a stroke. And let's use a nice color like so. Okay. Now, with this element, I can change its width from here or its height from here to fixed or fill. Now, fixed height basically allows me to resize that element vertically in any way that I want. Fixed width allows me to do the same horizontally. However, if I change one of these values to fill container, for example, the height, this will be as tall as the available space in that container or in that parent. Same goes for width as well. I can set this to fill container, right? So if I had another element in here that had a fixed height, let's say, you can see that this element that has fill container in the vertical direction fills all the available vertical space. Now, when it comes to fill container horizontally, I can set the height to whatever value I want. But when I set the width to fill container, it fills the available horizontal space. So now if I were to resize the parent element, you can see the behavior of these two elements. The one with fill vertical or a fill container vertically will resize vertically like so. The one with fill container on the horizontal axis will resize like so. And of course, we can have both of them. I can have fill container horizontally and fill container vertically. So now that element will behave like this. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So those are the new resizing options available in uh, Figma's auto layout. Now with this new version, we have some pretty cool new alignment options as well. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a new frame and I'm going to add auto layout to it. And in this new frame, let's say we have some uh, just some random shapes. And let me quickly give these some uh, different colors. So now in the old version of Figma, uh, you would do the alignment on the child level. But in this new version, you do the alignment on the parent level. So if you open up this um, panel that says alignment and padding, you can see right here how the items are positioned. In my case, they are aligned to the left and to the top. But as I move my cursor over, we can see the various options that we have. This is center top. This is center right. Now this is middle left, middle, middle right, bottom right, bottom center, bottom left. So you now control how items are aligned 
from the parent element instead of each one uh, individually. Personally, I kind of liked being able to align each item individually in the old version, but I can see the benefits of using this new approach as well. So I'm kind of torn. I like the old one, but I also like the new one. We'll see with time uh, if uh, it's such a big deal that uh, you can't align items individually now. But yeah, essentially, this is how you can align elements in an auto layout frame right now. You can click this uh, icon and you can choose uh, your alignment option from there. Now, with this new uh, layout, you have distribution options now. So uh, the layout that I showed you here is called Packed, where basically every element is positioned next to each other. But you can also choose Space Between. Okay, now with Space Between, if you resize this element, you will see that the elements now have equal space between them. And the alignment options are relatively the same, but you have less options. So obviously you can only align them top, center, or bottom if you have a horizontal layout, or you can align them left, middle, or center and right if you have a vertical auto layout. And of course, this works in both directions. And this is very useful. For example, uh, if you have a typical website uh, header, you can have the logo here, navigation menu here, and maybe a search bar or something or a call to action button here. So you can have three elements. And notice that the elements rearrange themselves automatically to preserve that equal space between them as I'm removing or adding new items. So those are the new uh, distribution options you can find in uh, Figma's auto layout. And you can get to them by switching between packed and space between. So this is packed, and this uh, the distance between these elements can be controlled using this input. But if you switch to space between, the distance between them will be determined by the number of items and also the width or height of the parent element. And that was a quick demo of what you can do with this new auto layout feature. Uh, Figma also released a demo file that goes along with it, and that explains everything in more uh, detail. So make sure to check that out in the link uh, down below. Now, before we wrap up, just one uh, quick thing. If you want to learn how the old auto layout was working, uh, I made a, a short course about it. And that course is still relevant today because the basics and the best use cases for auto layout are essentially still the same, even though the functionality is uh, slightly different in this, uh, in this new version. And again, you can find a link to that uh, down below. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm Adi Pordila, and until next time, take care.